the highest place in South Kakalaki. Yeah. South Carolina? North Carolina. Cool. Sassafras Mountain. Okay, on this episode, we're gonna work on the cold air intake, the radiator, and also the radiator overflow tank, kind of finish up the cooling system for the engine. And then we're gonna be even closer to starting it up. Let's start with the fresh air intake, which actually came with my donor, saving me a couple hundred bucks, and it matches really good with that throttle body. And the reason why it matches is because they're both BBK. So what we're gonna do, the, my last Cobra, what I did is I brought the air filter out here, uh, but there's plenty of space here, and what we're gonna do is since this is a 78 millimeter throttle body, this cold air intake will fit just inside there to give us the angle we need to put the filter right here. And then that also works well for all the hoses that connect to both the throttle body and over on the vacuum side, driver side, valve cover. So we're gonna clean all this up and get it installed. Okay, we got this tent in here. I kind of like it where it is, but I'm a little concerned it's gonna hit the overflow tank. We may have to shorten it here to get it in this empty space, or even cut it off here and shorten it and take it straight out, or both. So what we'll do is move forward next with doing the radiator in the tank to see how this fits. And ultimately, they, there is a bracket that comes with your kit when you order the 2004 Mustang GT when you tell them that's your donor. And this bracket is supposed to attach back here at this three quarter inch tube. But what we can do is, you can see it attaches to the mass airflow sensor, kind of like a bracket for it. We could bend that out and actually attach it here to the panel so it doesn't move around when driving. I guarantee you'll hear that and that'd be annoying. So we'll leave it like this and go ahead and move forward with the radiator and see where we can fit it later on. Next up for the cooling, like you saw, I took the donor apart. We're not using the donor radiator. We're gonna be using that brand spanking new Moshimoto radiator. It's very light get it put in place it's very nice so my nice new Mishimoto radiator has an issue the mounting bracket for the Mustang mounts on the top and bottom of the outside well for the Cobra it's a bracket here along the top and it's an aluminum fill panel along the bottom as you can see here in the manual um, and there is very very little room we're talking I don't know a quarter of an inch here I'm pretty sure I can rivet into this for the bottom panel but there's no way I'm gonna hang the radiator off that, just a little bit of material. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this bracket. We're gonna build a, another bracket for the top and modify the bottom so we can attach it. And I'll show you what I mean. With the radiator in position, it's sitting about right here, lined up with the tube. So what I'm gonna do is cut this knob off and build a bracket here, and then just straighten this one out. And I can drill through them out here. Now I won't mount this now because we need to make sure the radio can move a little bit so we can adjust with that nose piece. But that's the best way that I figure that I can do a bolt through or even rivet to both of these two members here and then either bolt through or rivet directly to this. Probably bolt to this, that way if you ever take the radiator out, it'd be easier to take it out and do that on both sides. I think it's gonna be a stronger mount than what, you, what I'd be able to get right here on these little pieces of tube.
Got the mounting brackets all modified, cleaned up, and painted so they look nice. So this next day here with those dry, we're gonna reinstall these and get this radiator mounted. Now that we got these brackets bent the right way, I'm gonna fit this in here and see where we need to mount these top brackets that we built. Okay, so I'm gonna mark these so I can drill a hole, have somewhere to zip tie it in place until we get these brackets mounted. Okay, I just drilled two holes here just so I could get a zip tie through here to hold it in place. But you can see how it works now with this bracket. I, so how it's supposed to work is you have enough material in your radiator to drill and mount a hole and you, you bolt through the radiator and you mount it to these two pieces of tube still here. Well, again, there's only about a quarter inch on this aftermarket radiator. This piece goes on and then you rivet it across here and here to kind of cover that up and help hold it. I think we can still do that, but I also created these brackets to mount here to the, uh, the mounting bracket for the, the pan here, Moshimoto radiator. So we'll rivet this into place and then we're gonna leave this zip tied because again, this needs to move in and out based on this piece that goes here in front of the nose when we put the body on. So we're gonna mount it with these pieces, leave this zip tied, put the fan on and plumb it up. Here's what I ended up having to do. I've had this thing on and off here a couple times um, pop you a couple holes in this little flange at the top of the radiator very carefully to make sure you're not getting into the coil. And then, uh, so we got our bracket mounted. Went ahead and riveted it on there. And you, once that's on, you can't get you can't get the radiator in here. So you got to pop it back off. Hence, having to do the zip tie mounts. So we'll get this. See if this will be the final mount. Also, I went ahead and attached the fan, the factory fan fits perfect. In fact, this radiator comes with hardware for you to attach it. So the fan's already on the back because this is planning to be the last time I take this thing off of here. Okay, now we'll drill and rivet those, It'll be mounted. Yeah, this, with this bracket mounted here, we can mount the overflow tank. And as I suspected in the last episode, we're hitting the cold air intake because um, it actually mounts kind of down. And this is flat. So <clears throat> this has got to go back. It's just in the way. It really needs to be right here anyway for better airflow. So we're going to have to shorten this intake probably right here. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get this mounted and then we'll take the fil air filter off so we can mount the overflow tank. Got this bracket riveted in place and I don't like the idea of riveting the top of this radiator because it's just too small and I really don't need to because we built this bracket and that radiator is there to stay but since we don't rivet here, if you ever have to replace the radiator, all you got to do is unbolt it. We just have to figure out how this nose piece works later. Now for the overflow tank, I don't like, they don't give you any instructions on how to bolt this thing through. <clears throat> this is obviously not the factory one, but it's gonna sit like this. And I'm thinking I'm gonna get enough bolt and drill straight through this three quarter tube so I can put a nut and other things, hardware, to fully bolt this thing through the frame. Instead of just attaching to this little bracket, I'm just afraid that's just too flimsy. And then you have a support bracket back here. So we're gonna mark this. You can hold the drill. I drilled through and it barely catches that tube still, but what that allows me to do is I pillage the factory five hardware they send with your kit. <clears throat> There's some five sixteenths bolts and nuts that work perfectly to be able to bolt this thing up. It will sit like that. I like it. And we have this rear support bracket that comes with your kit. And honestly, 
You really don't need it. But we've got it painted, ready to go on. We're gonna use it. Now, it connects to the X member down here. And what we'll do is just rivet it in place because it's gonna be really hard to get down there and drill a big enough hole. So that radiator installed and the expansion tank as well, we're ready to plumb it to the engine. Really like how we did the brackets. And the last thing we'll do is when we put the nose aluminum on with the body, is attach it down here to the bottom as well, making this a super steady, super strong installation for the radiator. I like it. Let's plumb it up. Quick tip with your new radio radiator position. These things have been super easy. I like to drop something and bent these two. Get your piece of cardboard, protect your new radiator, unlike me. It's not that hard to do. There, should have did that five minutes ago. Plumbing the radiator for the 4.6 modular engine from the 04 Mustang GT can be a little interesting. Because the radiator is so much further away than it was for stock, you're gonna have to use what Factory 5 sends you, which is this corrugated stainless steel pipe, which is perfectly fine. They send you all the fittings you need. If you, um, I'll show you a picture right here of my old Cobra. You can clearly see where I ran the pipe across here. Now, this one's a little bit unique because this is what connects to the block, and then also this part connects to your expansion tank. So they, they, you're gonna have to use this and then splice it, run the rest of it to the bottom of the radiator. So we'll hook up the bottom of the engine, comes to the expansion tank using this, and then the rest of it comes to the bottom radiator. And this, to me, is just ugly. So I'm going with the Mishimoto piping plumbing kit that you also, I think I got, I'll put a link in the bottom of the video where I got it from, but you got the Mishimoto radiator. Why not use the Mishimoto pipes? And of course, I went with the blue to kind of go with the theme of the whole blue inside the engine bay. So this is the upper radiator hose, which almost reaches, not quite. So we're gonna have to use a little piece of the corrugator to get the rest of the way here. So let's pull it up now. I've actually already connected the bottom down there. You can't see it, but it looks a lot better than that piece of junk that came off the donor. Here we are with the bottom piece connected to the engine block and up to the expansion tank. So now I'm, it barely makes it to the power rack over here. So now I've got to run the rest of this to the front of the radiator. A Sawzall with a thin metal blade on it does quick work with this corrugated pipe and leaves a nice smooth edge because <clears throat> they do not send you with a clean edge. This is a very tight fit. Upper hose is pretty simple, connect it here. And like I said, you need a little piece of the corrugated that Factory 5 provides with the kit. And then the sleeve connected to the top of the radiator and we are plumbed up. We got everything in for the cooling system. We got to redo the cold air intake, but that's not a big deal. We'll shorten the tube, make sure the filter is about right here, and we get plenty of air. I think that's got it for this episode. On to the next thing. And this is what happens they creep out here and throw stuff away. Good job, mommy.